by the petitioner, the petitioners, is that several state officers violated the constitution and several legislations that deal with enforcement of these electoral principles. Lord, that evidence is found in the affidavit of Olga Karani that was filed in court on the 25th of August 2017. Lord, under our constitution, Article 152, sub Article 3A, and I just wish to make reference to that article. Every cabinet secretary, before assuming office, swear and affirm to have obedience to the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. Now, what is contained in this affidavit is a classical case where cabinet secretaries acted in a partial manner and engaged in campaigns and in some instances intimidated voters. But I want to start with the first evidence, which is at page 22 of that affidavit. And this is a transcription of an interview that was carried by a KTN journalist, Sophia Wanuna, with the High City Cabinet Secretary Joe Mushero. Now, my lords, if you go to page 23, the first paragraph, the Cabinet Secretary says, for us as Cabinet Secretaries, we are allowed to campaign for the President. If you move a little bit further, when pressed upon by the journalist, this is what he says. He says, the Constitution and the law allow me to do that. In quotes, that's the campaign. And he says, and with impunity, I, I dare say, so they can go to court and so on. I expect courts to rule in our favor. <coughs> Lord, if you move to the next page, which is at page 27. Again, there's another transcription of a speech by the water CS, Eugene Wamalo. And this is what Honorable Wamalo says. He says, we cabinet secretaries have been exempted from the requirement of political neutrality. And he concludes by saying, as ministers, we are political appointees. 
and we will support the president wherever we are. And on this, we will not be afraid, Your Excellency. Namalot, our submission this morning is that elections are not merely about numbers. Elections is a process that entails many things. The process that leads to the casting of elections should itself be seen to be free and fair. To my lords, state officers should not be allowed to use state resources to campaign for any candidates. Now, my lord, I want this court to take note of the fact that when we passed this new constitution, we enacted chapter 6. which deals with issues of leadership and integrity. And my Lord, if you read Article 73.1a, it says, Authority assigned to a state officer is a public trust to be exercised in a manner that is consistent with the purposes and objects of this constitution. 73, sub article 1, Roman 1. And sub 73, sub article 2, says that leaders must be elected in an election that is free and fair. And 2B, which I want to underline, says that decisions should not be influenced by favoritism or other improper motives. My Lord, you will Notice that the next transcript that I'm going to read to the court will give a classical case where the cabinet secretary is actually intimidating voters to vote for a particular political party. And I'm, 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 I'm taking the learned judges to page 38 of that affidavit. And my Lord, that's a, a transcription of a speech by Mwangi Kiunjuri, who was touring Taita Taveta on the 22nd of July 2017. And I just want to read a small part of that transcription. It's in Kiswahili. He says, Barabara ya mwalulu na mwatate, kilomita ishirina mbili, iyo kilomita yote inaendelea kujengwa. Barabara ya voi mwatate, complete. Undanyi township yote. And this is where he now makes comments that are contrary to the Constitution. He says, How are we wenyu? Dan Mwanzo, Joyce Ray, walirudi kwa serekali mwaka mmoja na nusu peke yake. Kwa hivyo, mwaka mmoja na nusu peke, peke yake, barabara sita, imefanyika uku kwenyu taita taveta. Lord, these are comments being made a few days to elections. This was on the 22nd of July. 
and elections were due on the 8th of August. My Lord, I want to submit that while all these comments were being made by these cabinet secretaries, there were clear legislations that clearly barred them from engaging in any activities that were to be seen to be partisan. And I want to refer, my lords, to page 62 of our submissions. And I'm referring to section 15 of the Political Parties Act. And my Lord, that's what section, this, section, this is what section 15 states. It says, a public officer who engages in activities of a political party or candidate or act or publicly indicate support for or opposition against any party, side, or candidate participating in an election commits an offense. Lords, at page 60, there is another piece of legislation that emphasizes neutrality. I'm referring to page 60 of our submission. I'm referring to section 12 of the Political Parties Act, number 11 of 2011. Lord, that section states, and I just want to read subsection C, a public officer shall not c engage in political activity that may compromise or be seen to compromise the political neutrality of that office. And then finally, on the same page 60, there is another important legislation, which is the Public Officer Ethics Act. And this is very clear, my lords. It says, Section 16, 1B. A public officer shall not, in connection with the performance of his duties, indicate support for or opposition to any political party or candidate in an election. May not all these provisions of the law read together with the articles of the Constitution shows a clear case of cabinet secretaries that were violating the Constitution and the law with impunity. My Lord, to sum it up on the constitutional standards, I would like to refer, my Lords, to Article 232 of the Constitution. That is the one that deals with values and principles of public service. And 2321C, my lords, obligates any person in public service to be responsive, to be impartial, and to ensure that there is equitable provision of services. It's, it's my very humble submission, my lords, that uh, by the conduct that has been brought to the attention of this court, they said cabinet secretaries violated the law and 
the Constitution. My Lord, I've read all the replies that have been filed in this petition. And the only person who has come out to defend his actions is Dr. Kibisho, through an affidavit that he filed in reply to this petition. But the other three cabinet secretaries have not filed any response to the issues that have been raised in this petition. But there is something that the third respondent has said, which is extremely curious. Now, in his reply, Avidavit, paragraph 27E, This is what the third respondent says. He says, I am not aware of any cabinet secretaries who actively and openly abused their offices and used state resources to advance my political interests. He concludes by saying, no such act was done with my knowledge. Lord, I, I submit with all humility that there is no way cabinet secretaries would have engaged in activities that were never in the knowledge of the third respondent. I submit that that government in the Avidavit does not discharge the burden which is placed on those cabinet secretaries to rebut the allegations put forth by the petitioner. And I want to refer my lords to the decision